Hey guys, welcome back. So today, I brought home this Honda EG1400X. This one I really know nothing about, and that's because the person selling it had no knowledge of its run condition. So I didn't ask too many questions. He was only asking $40, uh, but I did pull the recoil and the compression felt good. So I'm going to get you set up a little bit better. I want to check the basics and then we'll try starting this. It's really hard to see. That oil is very clean, but I, I think it is full, maybe a touch over. Uh, the oil itself feels fine. Yeah, and there is some water in the bottom of the tank. Thankfully, the tank itself is not rusted out. Anyway, that does need to be cleaned out, but not a concern right now. If you see in the top left, that is the fuel pickup, and that's not on the bottom of the tank, so there's no danger of picking that water up. All right, I've got the light hooked up and turned on, so if it does start, I want to see if it makes power. But I'd say this is a bad sign because looking at this, I didn't do this. The ignition is on, choke is on, fuel is on. So someone was trying to start this before me and I assume failed. All right, that one surprised me. I didn't expect it to run at all, but it did. The engine sounds good and the generator head works as well. So we're only dealing with a carb issue. I mean, the carb does need to come off without question, but I am gonna pull the bowl drain. There could be water in there causing some of this issue. So we'll drain out whatever's in the bowl. We'll try to restart it again, see if it changes things at all. <laughs> well, that is your problem. Yeah, I was trying to save that gasket, but uh, yeah, I failed. All right, so we know the flow from the tank is good. The issue's in the carb.
Not too bad. That looks like water in the bowl. Bit of rust. But the carb itself looks decent. Yeah, and the needle's stuck. That's why we weren't getting any fuel. Nope. It's not stuck. Let's pull off the sediment bowl, make sure that that's not clogged. Yeah, I'm not really seeing anything too concerning. I mean, there is a drop of water down there, but not enough to cause an issue. So I thought that needle was stuck when I first tried taking it out and then it came out. So that could have been all that was keeping this from running. Anyway, I'm going to quickly clean out that sediment bowl. We'll put it back on. We'll just hook up a line, try to blow some air through here and make sure that it can make it all the way through. Yeah, we get nothing. So there's an obstruction somewhere. Yeah, I don't think it's there. Potentially it's around the corner. We're up in here, so I'm going to try to crack those free and get a peek inside. Okay, we still got no flow. So we know the valve's okay, although it was pretty dirty, but that's not the th issue here that's preventing the flow. There is something blocking the flow. I guess the question is where does this come out? Yeah, it's right there. That is completely clogged. I kind of dismissed that as plastic, but that I think is the fuel inlet. Yeah. So tempted to blow this out, but that could cause damage and even carb spray. I mean, I guess if this comes out in one piece, this rubber piece, then we can try that. But some sprays will swell that and completely ruin it.
Still clogged. I'm going to try a zip tie. A small zip tie should make that corner. Maybe I can poke some of that stuff out. I think I got it. You can see right there, the zip tie. That is the pilot jet, and in there is the main jet. I'll try to get that out in the emulsion tube. All right, and that's pretty much it as far as disassembly goes. I'm just going to run through all the jets and openings to make sure they're clear, and then we'll put this in the ultrasonic for a bit. Oh, forgot this here. This is an adjustable jet right on the side. And that's part of the idle circuit. I mean, the idle circuit of the pilot jet comes through here. And there are a series of holes usually on the side of the carb. Uh, one of them is adjustable. And that one is in front of the plate. And that always provides fuel to the engine. So I'm going to gently screw that in to figure out where we're set at. It's probably at about two turns out, but let's find out for sure. There's one half and a quarter. So one and three quarters. main jet's not clogged so I think this would have run actually if there hadn't been a clog where it was it just wasn't getting fuel
So for the pilot jet, just make sure it snaps down all the way. Sometimes they don't, and that'll cause a run issue. This is the idle set screw. Uh, this generator does not idle, so you don't need to worry too much about this. Other than just get it to pop through just a tiny bit. The main purpose here is just to hold down the pilot jet. All right, so half one half one and three quarters we'll leave it there we can always adjust it later Okay, I also ran this air box through the ultrasonic and cleaned it up and was noticing there's no gasket here between the air box and the carburetor. So checked my stash and I found one that looks like it'll work. So I'll go with that. And as far as the engine side, I did manage to save the one that was on this machine. It's actually still on it. But I wanted to try to source a new one if I could. And this one seems to be the right part. But the opening here is too big. It is meant for a different machine, probably a six horse. So I think it would be better to omit this and just stick with the original. So I drained most of the gas out of the tank, at least all that would come out on its own. But we still have a decent amount on the bottom. So I'm just going to soak that up with some towels. And, you know, I really just want to get that water out and any loose rust.
All right, ready to give this thing a try. I've got the kilowatt hooked up as well as the space heater. Now this generator can only handle 1200 continuous volt amps, uh, which isn't quite the same as watts, but in the case of a resistive load like the space heater, it's a power factor of one. So 1200 watts is really the max continuous. So I'll run that space heater on 750 watts and the light is another 70 watts, assuming it starts and runs. A little bit slow, 58 hertz, 126.1 volts. Yeah, the speed came up a little bit, 60 hertz, about 126 volts. Let's try loading it up to 750. All right, not too bad. Started second pull and sounded good, at least for about a minute. But I could tell it was running rich and I was suspicious of this filter. When assembling the airbox, after handling this filter, I noticed I was covered in oil. So that was acting as a restriction, basically choking that airflow and causing that engine to run rich. Once I removed that filter, the engine speed actually increased and the engine smoothed right out. So loaded it to 750 watts. It did just fine until I popped this filter back on. The engine went to stall almost immediately. So we do need to get a new filter ordered. Not a big deal. And as far as the, this machine goes at this point, I mean, electrically and mechanically, I think we're in pretty good shape. It just needs to be cleaned up a bit.
This thing cleaned up a little bit better than I thought it would. You know, cleaned the tank, got all the grease and dirt off the block, as well as the starter recoil and polished up the exhaust a bit. So new air filters fitted. I'm just gonna start the engine, make sure that things are good. Yeah, this engine, very fuel efficient. I shut that fuel valve off and it must have been at least four minutes later before it finally ran out of gas. Anyway, this engine, it sounds great. It runs very smooth, has absolutely no issues handling a 750 watt load. So, you know, this machine didn't really need much. It just needed that fuel inlet cleaned up and a new air filter that wasn't soaked in oil and uh, a little bit of cleaning. So anyway, I hope this video helps someone. Thanks for watching.